Hey folks, in 2016 Nvidia launched the GTX 1060, an instant classic in the mid-range GPU market. It became the 1080p card for most gamers, combining performance, power efficiency and affordability while offering performance that was on par with the previous generation's high end, the GTX 980. Above it sat the GTX 1070, but in between those two cards, well there was a huge gap. And naturally everyone expected that gap to be filled by a GTX 1060 Ti. But that card never came. Or did it? The GTX 1060 launched with 1280 CUDA cores, 6 gigs of GDDR5 and strong efficiency and it went head to head with AMD's RX 470 and 480. Now the Nvidia card had the edge in most DX11 titles, while AMD's Polaris GPUs often pulled ahead in DirectX 12 and Vulkan games, and came with up to 8GB of VRAM compared to the 1060's 6GB cap. Now of course there was a 3GB version of the 1060 with fewer CUDA cores and even more confusion, but the less we say about that one, the better. Now rumours about a 1060 Ti began to swirl soon after launch. Places like Video Cards reported it, even Kit Guru picked it up and speculation exploded on online forums and in the comment section of various YouTube videos. Leakers suggested it would use a cut down GP104 chip, the same silicon behind the GTX 1070 and 1080 and that made sense because Nvidia did have a habit of doing exactly that. The GTX 560 Ti, well that was based on GF114, a refined version of GF104 which powered the GTX 460. The GTX 660 Ti straight up used GK104, the same chip which was in the GTX 670 and 680, just with fewer cores and a narrower memory bus. So when people expected a cut down GP104 based 1060 Ti, it wasn't just wishful thinking, it was historical pattern recognition to some extent. Now interestingly, Nvidia did actually use GP104 in some GTX 1060s. These rarer models had exactly the same specs, that 1280 CUDA cores and 6 gigs of VRAM, and most gamers they never noticed, unless they were using GPU-Z or disassembling their cards to repaste them. But there is a twist here, Nvidia didn't just use those cut down chips in gaming cards, they used them to create something entirely different, a workstation GPU in the form of the Quadro P4000. Now this was launched in early 2017 and the P4000 featured 1792 CUDA cores, 8 gigs of GDDR5 and a full 256 bit memory bus, a perfect fit in between the 1060 and the 1070. And this gives us a glimpse of what could have been the 1060 Ti in disguise. So why didn't Nvidia release this as a GeForce card then? Well it's quite simple. Profit. Why sell a 1060 Ti for $320 when you can rebrand it as a Quadro, lock down the drivers and sell it to professionals for $800 instead? The P4000 targeted engineers, CAD users and 3D professionals, people who didn't care about frame rates but did care about driver certifications and long term reliability. And yes in 2025 it might seem a bit far fetched that that was what Nvidia used to be known for with their drivers, but at one point they did have a sterling reputation. Now back on the gaming side, Nvidia didn't really need to budge either. The 1060 was already beating the RX 480 in most DX11 benchmarks, and AMD's response to this was to stretch Polaris even further out of its comfort zone with cards like the RX 580 and 590. Brilliant cards for sure, but they didn't put enough pressure on Nvidia to force the release of a 1060 Ti. Now I'm absolutely not saying that a P4000 is a worthwhile purchase in 2025, but here's the cool part. Even today, the Quadro P4000 it is still somewhat usable as a gaming card, if you're willing to play with the settings a bit. In Cyberpunk 2077 running at 1440p medium, which is well out of its comfort zone, but with FSR 3.1.2 set to balanced, that's an internal res of about 1484 by 835 the P4000 averaged 50fps with 1% lows hovering above 43 and that held up in a variety of gameplay situations. 
Day is Gone with its new PS5 Pro-esque patch was really solid too, at 1440p with an 80% resolution scale, that's 2048 by 1152 and on high settings, we averaged out at about 66 FPS, with 1% lows at around 51. Drop that to a native 1080p and it's even smoother. Even Call of Duty Warzone, it worked. Barely. At 1440p with FSR set to performance, rendering internally at a resolution of 1280x720, and on the minimal preset, it hovered around 60 to 70 FPS in game. Not pretty for sure, but after a few rounds to get used to the lower image quality and lower FPS, even a win in the final circle wasn't out of reach for the P4000. It's not ideal, but it's still kind of amazing that a 7 year old workstation card that was never meant to game at all can still pull its socks up and just kind of get on with it in a lot of more modern titles. So the GTX 1060 Ti, it never wore a GeForce badge. But between the rumours, the GP104 based 1060s and the Quadro P4000, it definitely existed somewhere in the shadows. And this P4000 in particular, well, it could be very close to that 1060 Ti we just never got. So hey, let me know, would you have bought a 1060 Ti if Nvidia had launched it? What do you think the specs of that card could have been? Would it have been cut down further than what we see in the P4000? For now though, I'll just say take care. And I'll see you all in the comment section down below. And in the next video.